I have been using Honor's very first foldable smartphone for a little over a week now, and all I can say is, wow, this device has me speechless. Not only is this the first foldable smartphone to use Qualcomm's latest and greatest Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset run on 4 nanometer process node tech, but the first foldable in my eyes that actually makes sense. Its cover display resembles that of a regular smartphone screen with a normal aspect ratio and its foldable panel is similarly sized to a miniature tablet with an aspect ratio that also makes sense. It has an insanely well thought out hinge made by Honor themselves and has absolutely no gap while folded. It packs in a triple 50 megapixel camera setup, symmetrical design and bezels, high refresh rates OLED panels that each boast insane brightness and house two of the exact same 42 megapixel selfie cameras. It has a huge 4750 milliamp hour battery and extremely fast 66 watt charging. Not to mention it packs in an insane amount of accessories in its box. With all that said, it's time to deep dive into my immensely detailed full review of the Honor Magic V. The Honor Magic V comes in three different colors, namely gloss black, titanium silver, which are both gloss, or the color that I have here with me today called burnt orange and is the only one with a vegan leather skin. It looks absolutely phenomenal at the back, extremely elegant and has a very classy and glossy Honor branded logo at the bottom left hand corner. And you do get an included kickstand case in the box, which has a bit of a carbon fiber finish and really is super tiny to slap on the back of your phone, kind of just clips on very simply and makes it super easy to watch movies or play games with the controller on your device. I really do like that they've included a kickstand case in the box completely free. I mean, it is pretty expensive, so it's kind of cool that they've beefed it up a bit. Inside the device, we have a massive battery for a foldable that is at 4,750 milliamps with extremely fast 66 watt wired charging, but unfortunately no wireless charging this time around. However, the wired charging is remarkably faster than other foldables on the market. The external display is covered by nano crystal glass and the internal one is covered by magnetron sputter optical nano film, which can apparently deflect reflections. The body is made of an aluminum frame and of course there is glass or vegan leather on the back. This is one of the thinnest foldables on the market coming in at just 6.7 millimeters when unfolded and 14.3 millimeters when folded and it is just 288 grams for the leather version and 293 for the glass version. Though it sounds a bit heavy, you've got to remember this is pretty much two phones glued together. At the back we are kitted with three 50 megapixel sensors, one being an ultra wide sensor with a field of view of 122 degrees, the next one of course being the main sensor with laser autofocus and the last one being a very special sensor to honor which they really boasted to me about at the launch event. It is called the Spectrum Sensor and can apparently reveal more details within each shot that the main and ultra wide sensor take in order to make each photo look perfect in complex environments. The ultra wide sensor can be taken natively at 50 megapixel which looks great but the bin down 12.5 looks even better thanks to AI. Same thing can be said with the main sensor over here looks absolutely phenomenal thanks to the Spectrum camera popping in over here. We do have digital zoom up to 10 times. That is the max zoom, doesn't look the best, but the spectrum camera is what truly shines over here. And I have been told by Honor themselves that this will improve drastically over future software updates. Right now you're seeing ultra wide flicking to main sensor over here. And the spectrum camera is enhancing each and every individual photo. And I must say it, it really does work. I'm not quite sure what it is, but the detail that it packs in looks like Every other phone should just take a step back and let Honor do its thing. But the portrait mode is a bit questionable. It looks okay, it blurs a bit too much, it looks a bit too artificial and sometimes it even blurs the foreground a bit over here as you can see with my little pup. It does a decent job but all in all I think that this will get improved with future software updates. Upping close and personal to a portrait shot however has pretty much perfect edge detection, it looks pretty natural too. And there is a super macro mode though, no macro sensor and it does a more than decent job too. We do have 4K 60 FPS main video recording, it looks as it should, as 4K should. 
nice and stable and super silky smooth too. And of course, we also have ultra wide, though capped at 30 FPS. Though you can do 1080p, you can also do 4K at 30 FPS, but do bear in mind that both of them are capped at 30 FPS. It still looks pretty decent, though we do have HDR and a whole bunch of other lookup tables in terms of different effects that we can use within movie mode of the camera, such as nostalgia and focus. And there's just so many of them. I just had to include a couple seconds of each and every one of them. Even at night over here, as you can see, they really give it a, a movie effect, kind of like a, a dark and gloomy and interesting thriller that you might see on TV, I guess you could say. It, it's a cool, a cool idea. I'm not sure I'd use it that often, but it looks pretty cool. And 4K 60 FPS shooting video at night looks pretty great too. I can't have any complaints for it. And it's honestly a lot brighter than other 60 FPS phones I've tested out. 30 FPS brightens things out a bit more, but obviously lowers the detail a bit because of the stutteriness of 30 frames per second. We do have 4K 30 FPS ultra wide shooting at night. It actually doesn't look the best, but it does look a lot better than other phones I've tested at 4K at night. We have the ultra wide sensor over here and we can turn night mode on, but the strange thing is that with every time I turn night mode on, it kind of zooms in a little bit, just like a 0.1. It's a bit weird. Maybe it's my hands doing something strange, moving away from my body. Nevertheless, night mode looks okay. It doesn't look like the mega night mode that Qualcomm promised with their new chipsets. So I'm not sure Honor have completely adopted that, but Honor have told me once again that this will improve with future software updates. And you got to remember that this is pre-release software since I was sent the device earlier than it actually got launched. Nevertheless, the actual cameras do an absolutely incredible job, especially for a foldable phone. Talking about foldables, we have an in-house made ultra slim floating water drop hinge. It is made up of triple layer aerospace grade materials, which aids in the withstanding of 200,000 folds, which I'm pretty sure you're not really gonna be able to get through even if you own the phone for five years. Not to mention the best thing about it, there is absolutely no gap while folded. We have a power button on the right hand side of course and this is mixed up with a fingerprint sensor. Above that is the volume rocker and right at the bottom we have a USB 3.1 type C port as well as its first speaker. Second speaker at the top both paired with DTSX Ultra and we do have dual SIM 5G over here though unfortunately no expandable storage, even no nano SD storage. Wink, wink. We do have an IR blaster over here too and the selfie camera is pretty special. It's a 42 megapixel f2.4 sensor with phase detection autofocus and the exact same sensor is on the inner and outer display. It takes an absolutely phenomenal photo straight up and the portrait mode looks great, but a few issues over there. I'm not sure if you could see it, but I'm sure this is because this is still pre-released software. Yo, what's up guys? Technic here recording a selfie video on the brand new Honor Magic V. And yes, the selfie camera can record at 4K, though limited to 30 frames per second. The selfie cam can also do 60 FPS at 1080p. And here it is, the 1080p 60fps selfie video on the Honor Magic V. Let me know what you guys think is better, as well as what you think generally of the audio and video quality when using the selfie cam on the brand new Honor Magic V. And videos at night don't look half bad either. 4K 30fps, thank goodness we have 4K selfie, which is pretty awesome in terms of video. Many flagships of this year already have been lacking that. 1080p at 60 looks okay at night. 1080p at 30 looks even better because lower frame rate, higher brightness. We do have the selfie camera obviously bent down to 10.5 megapixel, which actually aids thanks to artificial intelligence at night, which makes selfies really shine at night. That's a pretty good thing, I guess you could say. The selfies are actually really good, whether you take them when the phone is folded or unfolded and turning on that screen and using that side mounted fingerprint sensor. It's a bit unfortunate there's no under display sensor, but I mean, it's understandable. This is a foldable device. We do have a load of different always on displays and I'm not sure if you, Notice what I did there. I just unfolded the phone for the first time, which really put a smile on my face. And we do have some wallpapers that actually transition when you use the foldable effect. And we have an always on display when it's unfolded too, which is awesome. And of course you can use that side mounted fingerprint sensor too when it's unfolded. And we do have double tap to unlock using Face ID too, which is something that many phones forget about when they have a physical fingerprint sensor. So it's truly a blessing in disguise. Of course, when the phone does unfold, it naturally 
enables Face ID, which means that you can unlock your device just by unfolding it. The foldable display is 7.9 inches in size. It is of course an OLED panel with a PPI of 382 and a resolution somewhere between QHD and Full HD. It has over 1 billion colors. It is 10 bit. It supports HDR10+. It has IMAX enhanced packed in, the first foldable to do that by the way. 800 nits of peak brightness and 1920 hertz pulse width modulation, which is actually a lot easier on your eyes when say you're reading a book late at night. And when slapping the foldable closed, you are welcomed to a cover display that has a huge 6.45 inch OLED panel with a more than decent aspect ratio of 21 by nine. It is curved, but only on one side and it has a resolution of 1080p with a pretty decently high pixels per inch. Of course, we also have a billion colors, HDR 10 plus, IMAX, all that jazz. And we have a thousand nits peak brightness and it keeps the PWM the same. And when using that cover panel, you can see that everything is just so darn symmetrical. Of course, the brightness and white balances pretty much perfect. The bezels at the top and bottom of the folded or unfolded display are so symmetrical. It's just so awesome to see. Once again, those little details we do have smart resolution, obviously to aid in battery, as well as screen refresh rate that can go up to 120 hertz on the cover display and 90 hertz on the foldable display. And when jumping into testufo.com, you can see that it's truly shooting out 120 FPS over here on the cover display. And of course we can unfold it as well. And we can go into the folded display to show you guys the 90 hertz if Nick can never get there because he's just so darn impressed with the foldable aspect of this, just seamlessly switching between 120 and 90 FPS. Of course, we can also adjust the brightness too, and we can add eye comfort as well as ebook mode to make your new foldable phone pretty much like a Kindle. We have a bunch of different color temperature modes too, though it's not extensive. And we do have a video enhancer to really pop the IMAX theater experience of watching movies and videos. We do have dark mode too, and it does get enabled for third party apps. It says only a couple of them in the options, but it aids to the wallpaper too. And it works with every third party app that I've tested out too. And when you fold it up, once again, super seamless, and it just adjusts that screen too to the dark mode that you use with the unfolded screen. And we do have Magic UI 6 skinned over Android 12. And yes, there are no Google services over here, but it is uncertain if there will be a global release. But if there is one, we will be fully packed and fully stocked with Google services. So don't worry about that. We have a bunch of different features over here. We have a bunch of widgets as well as a new thing called cards in this new Magic UI 6. And if it has a bar underneath an app icon, you can just slice up and pin the card. Super seamless. I, I guess you could kind of say the whole experience of the Honor Magic V has kind of been very seamless. You can also shrink and enlarge folders. If you have them shrinked, obviously you have to tap on the folder in order to get into it. But if you enlarge the folder, you can tap on the bottom right corner to open up the folder and go into the app, but you can also just tap on the app that you see and go straight into it, which really makes the whole foldable experience really worth it. I've seen this on previous Honor devices, but when you're using a small screen, it doesn't really make it very useful. Using it on a large screen is really useful. You can also go picture in picture with pretty much any app. And at the top bar over there on any app, you can jump into a floating window and you can slice that to the right hand side to pin it to the right side of your screen, which is pretty cool. And not only can you do this with one app, but you can do it with two or three or four apps. So you can have a whole bunch of apps pinned to the side of your screen there, which is really awesome. And of course we can also hop into another app and that being YouTube over here, though I can't sign in, we'll get to that in a sec tap on the little bar at the top and we can open up another app that being Google Chrome and you can use that app and just slide it to the side and you can start multitasking, which is really awesome. And you pretty much have two 21 by nine aspect ratio screens, literally two Sony Xperia ones next to each other. And you can multitask with it and bring up your pop-up screens, that being the floatable windows over here for four screens. I mean, if you can handle that kind of information, that's awesome. I'm not sure if I'd use it that often, but the fact that you can do that and then it's running so smoothly is just so awesome. You cannot sign into your Google account on the Chinese version, of course, just to let you guys know so that you don't go buying the Chinese version before you realize you actually can't sign into Google, but you can go into Chrome and of course the Play Store doesn't work either. It will work with the global version if there is one, but you can go into Google Chrome and you can sign in from that and you can just jump into your Gmail, you can jump into Maps, you can jump into YouTube, you can jump into Netflix, anything Google related on Chrome you can hop into and sign into on Google Chrome. 
And yes, when we are viewing things in full screen, there are some ugly black bars at the top and the bottom. And when you have it folded, there's some bars on the left and right side of the screen too, and at the top and bottom, but that's pretty much the case when in portrait mode on any phone. But you can zoom in or crop in that is when you use a first party app such as Gallery over here, but it does crop in quite a bit whether you're on the folded or the unfolded display, just to show you guys over here, just so that you can see foldables do still crop in, but I must say that the Honor Magic V does a much better job and implements it a lot better than other foldables around. And another awesome feature, I hope it comes to westernized apps. We have CCTV here in China and you can stream multiple channels at once with your Honor Magic V. You can watch four channels at the same time and seamlessly switch between, there's the word again, seamless. It's happening all over again. This phone is just so seamless, it's ridiculous. Not to mention that the haptics are so good and anything that you're doing, once again, seamless with the cover display too. But what about the sound? Speaking of those dual stereo DTSX Ultra, optimized speakers. Let's give them a listen. And now let's give those speakers a listen when playing a couple games. We do also have a game space overlay over here and there is turbo mode which really boosts your game performance too. Though it's automatic, you can't really toggle it on or off, but there are a bunch of features within the game space overlay such as hunter mode which just keeps you fully immersed within the game. And speaking of games, we're going to kickstart things off with Genshin Impact over here on the highest possible graphics settings and the max FPS was sitting between 33 and 61 FPS, but the 33 FPS only really happened when we folded the display. That's right, you fold it to the cover screen and you can unfold it back, but there's a bit of a jitter between the folds. I mean, obviously something that will get changed, but it's understandable, but it's, it's just so once again seamless how you can just run around in a game, unfold your phone, keep playing, fold it back, but do note that there is a bit of a crop factor when you have it unfolded. It looks absolutely phenomenal, but it does crop your game in a bit if you'd like to see some surroundings. With Bullet Force Max FPS over here, ultra graphics, but when you fold the device, it kind of does a weird squishing effect and makes it look a bit funky. You have to close it and reopen it in the cover display. It's sitting at 90 FPS though, which is weird. This game has an unlimited FPS cap and now it's stretching when we unfold it because we started it in the folded mode, but it does run pretty well. 90 FPS unfolded, and it should run at 120 on the cover screen, but it does not. It also sits at 90. Same thing can be said with Real Racing 3, though when you fold the screen, it actually completely reopens the game, and when you unfold it, once again, completely reopens the game. This also has an unlimited FPS cap, but whether it's folded or unfolded, it sits at 90 FPS, which is still better than 60, and most phones that have released this year have been capping at 60 with the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset, so I'm actually pretty happy to say that all games are running at 90, which is fantastic. We do have smart RAM, which can add two gigs to the original 12 gigs of RAM, though it uses the internal storage. And we have the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset, which is supposedly 20% more powerful and 30% more power efficient. But what does that mean in terms of benchmarks? Well, we're gonna be running through three different benchmarks right now. And before we kickstart benchmarks off, we're gonna be enabling the performance mode within the device. And we're gonna be checking out the battery percentage as well as the temperature at the start. We'll be comparing this at the end of the three benchmarks benchmark runs, the three benchmark runs being Antutu version 9 over here, testing out GPU and CPU, then Geekbench 5, testing out just CPU performance, and then 3D Mark Wildlife, testing out just GPU performance, and getting to the end of the test, it drained by 8%, which led to a milliamp hour permanent drainage of 23.75, which is a hell of a lot better than the average Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 powered smartphone I've personally tested on my channel, and when it comes to temperature, it added 17.7 degrees in Celsius, which is still almost 
10 degrees cooler in terms of adding temperature when compared to the average Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 powered smartphone tested on my channel. And when it comes to Antutu results, the Honor Magic V with its Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 powered chipset got a score of 969,799 points. And when it comes to CPU performance from Geekbench over here, it got the highest single core score I have ever seen on an Android smartphone with 1,218 points. And when it comes to 3D Mark Wildlife, 58.6 frames per second is incredible. And of course, destroying the other foldables that are currently available. The Honor Magic V is by far the most incredible looking foldable on the market, thanks to its elegant looking vegan leather backplate. From the glossy Honor branded logo to the 3D curved camera module, I can honestly say that this is the most well thought out design of a foldable to date. Inside that chiseled camera bump sits three more than capable 50 megapixel sensors, which take equally good photos and videos in all different lighting conditions. And while the new spectrum sensor really does aid in extra detail, I would be lying if I said I wasn't disappointed that there is no telephoto camera packed in here. Unfortunately, there is no under display fingerprint sensor here either, but it's understandable and the side mounted sensor is extremely snappy and reliable. There is also an always on display on the outer and inner display. And while the face unlock is not very secure, it's super fast and works well folded or unfolded due to dual selfie cameras, which by the way, take some incredible shots too. The holy grail of this device, however, is its impeccable software. Magic UI 6 is not only littered with more than useful features, but it is very well optimized due to the amount of detail used in integrating Android 12 with Honor's new software skin and insanely spec'd hardware. Speaking of hardware, Honor has cut no corners. We're welcome to plenty of RAM, class-leading Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 performance, pixel-popping resolutions, which when paired with fluid high refresh rate panels, make day-to-day -day tasks responsive and seamless. Not to mention that gaming on this device is more than exciting, thanks to its remarkable aspect ratios while folded or unfolded. But unfortunately, many games tend to crop in while gaming on the foldable screen. And while on the topic of displays, the Honor Magic V's panels are insane. They pop with 1 billion colors, support HDR10+, and IMAX, have huge real estate and very high brightness levels, making the Magic V a pleasure to use while opened or closed. Which leads me to say that not only is the Honor Magic V the most powerful foldable on the planet, but the only foldable that actually makes sense.